this is a continuation from the last video so if you haven't watched the playlist i suggest you do i have all the links below for this video let me correct a couple of mistakes that were made let me do that first here remember that i said that it doesn't even matter how you defined olc pge application i'm going to put this back to zero this isn't really code let me also make this public we haven't really talked about accessibility for inheritance yet but for this video let's just understand that when i say public inheritance it means that the public variables from the base class will remain public and the protected variables from the base class will remain protected which is usually the most case for inheritance i'm going to get deeper into this later in the series for this video let me just move on what i really wanted to do in this video is to start creating sprites or start drawing sprites first i'm going to have a private pointer something called sprite i'm going to make it a pointer i'm going to call it sprite pt ptr and by default it's not going to point to anything i'm going to use this pointer to point to a png file that's loaded in your ram and if you don't understand memory allocation i suggest watching video number 18 Anyways, I'm going to go to my downloads folder because I already have a smiley PNG, a PNG file. I'm going to copy this, control C. I'm going to go to the file explorer that the project is in. I'm going to paste it in there, control V. Now we have the smiley inside our folder. This is it. Now, if you don't know the path to put the sprite into, you can do this. First, let me get IO stream. Let me put this on top. And you can get the starting path by saying file system path. I'm going to get a variable called starting path. And I'm going to get it using a function called current path. Okay, I'm going to put a breakpoint here run the debugger okay this is the starting path and that's where the sprite is this is a typo if I go back to the folder this is the address so now what I'm gonna do is load the sprite we don't need this anymore And I'm going to say sprite pointer is a new sprite. And because we already put the file in the starting path, I can just say smiley.png. And of course, when you have dynamic memory allocation, you want to make sure that you delete it at the end. So at the end, I'm going to say delete. If the destructor is confusing, make sure you check out video number 18, which includes memory allocation. Also, on user create or on user update shouldn't be confusing. Or if it is, make sure you check out video number 9. If I look for on user create in the engine, here it is, line 2700 something. We run this before the game loop, which is this. And the while loop includes on user update. There's a lot of other code that goes with the engine, so this might look scary, but the idea itself isn't all that complicated, so make sure you check out the previous videos in this playlist. Anyways, I'm finally going to start drawing the sprite in the update. First, let me get a, get a position, a vector 2. Vector 2, or I'll just call it position. If you've used Unity, you should already know what a vector 2 is. If you don't, make sure you check out video number 20, because I talk about that in that video, operator overloading. For this video, let's just understand that a vector can be used as a coordinate, and this means the position on your game window. So I'm going to say, draw sprite. I'm going to draw the sprite in that position, and I'm going to use the pointer to point to the PNG file that we loaded. If I run this, F5. Okay, here we see the PNG file or the rendered image from the PNG file. 
I can also clear the window using the clear function. I can also designate a color. I'll just pick dark blue. Right now we're not moving the sprite. It's just sitting there, so we don't really need to clear it, but I'm going to do it anyways. F5. Okay. We also don't have transparency yet. I'm going to get to that later. For this video, just make sure that you can render an image. I can also change the position. I'm going to say 10, 0. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, but this is the 10, 0 position. Or something like 10, 50. Okay, that's a little more noticeable. You can also draw strings. Let me get another position. I'll call it string position. Zero. Oops. Make it zero, zero. And I'm going to say draw string. Again, use the position. And I'm going to say this is a string. F5. Okay, here's a string. I can also assign it a color in the parameter. I'll try red or dark red. Pick whatever color you like. Okay, this is very ugly, but we can see that we can render strings as, as well as images. So once you start drawing sprites as well as strings, you have your basic building blocks for your 2D game. It's not enough to build a complex game yet. We need, to, we need to talk about more stuff later on. But for your homework, try going into, this is the documentation for the OLC Pixel Game Engine. Try reading the documentation. I'm going to have all the links below. And see if you can get more done and try doing more before watching my next videos. Because sooner or later, you're going to have to start reading other people's code and start using that code or build your stuff on top of that code. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I'll see you next time.